Welcome to the channel Learn with Danish. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. Good morning all of you. In the last video we have discussed about what drama is, a bit of history about uh, the drama, about the origin of the drama, how it originated in the west, how was it like in the east, who were the main playwrights of the western drama mainly the greek writers where then we discussed about the uh, architecture of the greek theater uh, which was the earliest natural theater and the techniques used by the playwrights and other uh, person behind the uh, direction and things like that how they overcome the drawbacks of the uh, theater and uh, the uh, things like that and today in this uh, video we'll just uh, discuss about the structure of a play uh, so the first thing you need to note here is that a drama or a play is all about a story isn't it so where it has a problem or a conflict to be dealt with according to its type it may be uh, serious and dark in nature at times it may be a light one with a promising and a happy ending so whatever may be the type of the play or drama there has a proper structure for it the structure for uh, the comedy or let it be tragedy the structure is the same for both one thing you need to note here is that the structure of a play or the structure of a drama was also almost designed when the uh, drama originated and the playwright aristotle was uh, the uh, was the first playwright who wrote lot about drama and particularly uh, tragedy you know the treatise poetics aristotle also describes about the three segments of drama that is a drama has a beginning a middle part and the end so this was the basic structure in which the earlier drama used to be uh, later on these divisions the middle the beginning the middle the end were developed by another grammarian uh, uh, was uh, who developed was uh, uh, roman elius donatus he was a grammarian and as time passed by the drama evolved and it later uh started to have lots of uh, experimentations were done and it started to have five acts so later on you can see you know, the typical uh, elizabethan drama actually uh, which followed this uh, following the senecan tragedy were actually divided into five acts each comprising a number of scenes and these each uh, scenes were were followed by one by one and the change in the scene was indicated uh, by using a huge notice on a board to uh, signifying this is a change in the scene so that was how uh, uh, in earlier times the five act plays and the, the different scenes inside each acts were uh, notified or shown on the Uh, stage as you see as you can see in this slide the five act play uh, obviously the, each act uh, has an action to be undertaken so act 1 according to act, its action is another name for this part is exposition here the audience learn about the settings that is the time and the place where the uh, drama is taking place what is the time period in which the story is taking place and the characters are also introduced in this act and and uh, by the end of this act a conflict is also introduced for example when you analyze the drama oedipus rex you can see in the act 1 uh, in the exposition part even though oedipus rex is an ancient drama which wasn't divided into act 1 2 3 4 and 5 it had a middle part um, it had a beginning part middle part and an end 
so even though uh, uh, oedipus rex wasn't written in five acts you can still find the elements which could be put in each acts so as a beginning part you can see the thebes was infected by the disease called plague and oedipus the king was uh, was uh, trying to find a solution trying to find the reason behind uh, his country being infected by the plague and this was the conflict which was introduced in the uh, initial part of that story so in any any uh, other story or any other play you can have uh, such a conflict which is being introduced in act 1 or exposition moving on to the moving on to the act 2 or the second part there will be a rising action so this part or act 2 has action the actions or the incidents which take place in act 2 uh, is in such a way that it leads the audience to uh, the climax of the story so this this part act 2 will be having lots of complications which is uh, which is uh, rising up and uh, the character or the main hero has to meet with lots of uh, obstacles and problems so when you consider again uh, the same drama oedipus rex you can find that uh, oedipus uh, slowly uh, unfolding his own tragedy that uh, he had he might have killed uh, his own father so uh, it is it is just at the end of this uh, end of this part where they are about to reveal the uh, the main thread of the story so it is the uh, act 2 or the rising action is all about many complicated events going on and it is just uh, uh, and the act 2 ends at the peak of a point where uh, the drama or the story is just to reveal its suspense and then from there we move on to act 3 which is all about climax and this is where uh, the turning point of the play is actually revealed this act is characterized by highest amount of suspense and tension and the whole audience uh, the mood of the drama or the tense uh, uh, series uh, scenario is also moved passed on to the audience So act 1 or exposition is all about introducing the setting time place and the character and some sort of conflicts which the uh, uh, the conflict in a lighter way uh, and uh, moving on to the second act the complication increases the hero uh, come come up with lots of uh, obstacles and by the third act by the third act the main thread of the story or the main uh, crux of the story the turning point of the play is revealed and where uh, the audience is also at uh, the, uh, is also seated at the peak of the suspense and the uh, the uh, the suspense is also revealed or the matter of fact or the matter of conflict is also revealed at this point act 3 at the climax part it is revealed that oedipus is the one who uh, had killed his own father and married his mother and uh, this is a very uh, devastating moment as far as oedipus the king is concerned he unknowingly kills his father and had uh, married his mother and he also had children uh, in it and uh, slowly it is moved on to the act 4 which is uh, which do, which shows the falling action so it is the just opposite of the rising action or act 2 you can find uh, the complications are slowly settling down the story is uh, coming to an end uh, and any unknown details or the plot twist is also revealed at this moment so st- st- slowly uh, the you can find the cathartic moment in this part or in this act 4 slowly by the uh, they slowly after the, after this act 4 it is moved on to act 5 uh, where uh, the new mend or a solution is depicted so this is the final part of a drama act 5 is the final uh, part of a drama uh, 
in this act the author's opinion about his or her subject matter is revealed and sometimes a moral is also uh, picturized or depicted on the stage so generally um, in earlier uh, drama also as i said which had the beginning middle and the end uh, it uh, the uh, the thread of the story was always like uh, a conflict or the uh, quarrel between the good and the evil which was embodied by a uh, hero and the villain okay and at times the struggle uh, would also be between the hero and his own fate as in uh, as in the drama oedipus rex or at times uh, again the hero or heroine uh, struggle against the code of conduct or the conventions of the society as in the drama antigone antigone uh, in the earlier slide in the earlier video I told you antigone is the third part of oedipus rex oedipus rex was a trilogy and antigone was uh actually edipus rex daughter okay so daughter uh, and in that uh, drama what is being mainly uh, depicted is that daughter antigone goes against the rules of the society and do many things bravely so that was the thread of the story uh, in that part the third part of uh, edipus rex and in the next slide you can see uh, how the e, how the story or the parts of story is divided uh, according to the actions which is being taken place okay in first act act 1 you can find the general prologue or introduction and things like that in act 2 you can find a conflict which and also had lot of rising action okay the arrow or the line is is moving upward and by the act 3 you can find again uh, the suspense increases and finally at the end of the almost at the end of the act 3 you can find the climax or the turning point where the secret of the story or the crux of the story or the suspense of the story is revealed okay then uh, after that in the act 4 you can see the falling action where the hero or the uh, or the main actor realizes the folly of uh, uh, what has happened it is a, it is a time it is a cathartic moment as far as, as far as the audience and the actors are concerned and by the last part act 5 it is all about a resolution to be taken and also conveying or parting a moral of the of the story which is pa- which is passed on to the audience so uh, these are the uh, different uh, uh, this this is the main structure in which a play uh, uh, could be written earlier it was uh, like it had only three acts like uh, the middle part the beginning part middle part and the end okay and later on it developed and it started to have five acts like act 1 act 2 act 3 act 4 and act 5 exposition rising action climax falling action and uh, the last part denouement or resolution so with that i come to the end of uh, this video i hope uh, i have made some sense to it since uh, about the topic which is being discussed okay thank you